Hey plant fam! Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. This is part of my jungle. If you are not new here, thank you for coming back. So today I have a video that I think is really important for newer plant parents and I'd love to get your opinions on this, my more seasoned plant parents and and what you wish you would have known, but this is my top five things that I wish I would have known before I started collecting plants. So this is kind of like me speaking to my younger self from like four years ago, five years ago, before I started like really hardcore collecting plants, what I would have said to myself, the advice essentially that I would have given myself. So I don't think that this is just a video for new plant parents. I think it's important for us more experienced plant parents to chime in and leave a comment down below what you would add to this list so that anybody coming and seeing this video can go to the comment section and learn even more hopefully. So I definitely urge you to check out the comment section in all of my videos, honestly, if you don't, even if you don't leave a comment, I do think it's helpful to read them because you might learn something or you might meet a friend. I see you guys going back and forth in the comments and it makes me happy. So definitely engage with each other, chat with each other. Do not be afraid to say hello. So, bum, 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 got my list over here. Um, I wrote that song for you. I hope you like it. <laughs> So five things I wish I knew. Number one on my list is probably the most important thing. And I did learn it pretty early on. And I am grateful for Planty YouTube. For that reason, I learned a lot from watching some of my fellow YouTubers here for years before I started my own channel. So one thing that I learned, and I'm glad that I learned it pretty early on, but I wish I had known from the start, was to thoroughly check every plant, especially in big box stores, for pests. And it does not hurt to just pop the whole plant out of the container and check out the roots. I love to see what the roots are doing. It's not always going to be that easy. Some plants are just like, nah, or like their soil goes everywhere. But most plants are going to be pretty easy to just pop out of the pot really quickly. Check on what the roots are doing. Make sure that they are rooted. Some companies, unfortunately, do just like shove semi-rooted, a bunch of semi-rooted cuttings into a pot to make it look full and sell it as a, an established plant. So be mindful of that. Learn the signs of different pest damage. Spider mites, for sure, is one that you're going to want to keep an eye out for in the big box stores. If you see anything suspicious, on a plant a leaf looks funky something not normal it is normal for the bottom leaves or the older leaves on a plant to go yellow especially because they're inside a store so that's different but learn the signs of an unhealthy plant essentially before you buy it because like it's sure it's five dollars but then you bring it home and now you've got spider mites all over the rest of your plants or worse thrips i couldn't imagine a bigger nightmare for a new plant parent than thrips so like please 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 check your plants and also we we all know that you need to isolate your plants any new plants that you bring home and spray them with whatever you normally spray your plants with so that's a lot for a new plant person for sure but i think it's really important to know exactly what to look for when it comes to a healthy plant and how to make sure that that plant isn't going to unknowingly bring something in because you can look with your naked eye but sometimes we don't always see the pests so 100 percent, i'm gonna lump it into this first one here <laughs> treat your plants as soon as you bring them home keep them away from the rest of your plants but definitely learn how to discern the difference between a healthy plant and a really bad plant at the store before you even bring it home so I've been fooled by this a handful of times thankfully nothing crazy but even just like fungus gnats girl if I pick up the pot and there's like 20 fungus gnats that fly out of it 
I'm, I'm putting that pot back down. <laughs> so, and this happened to me at a nursery not long ago with my friend Liz, if you guys remember that plant shopping video where I was going to buy this beautiful sport variegated alocasia low rider. It was huge. It was like 30, 40 bucks. It was super cheap for this big, huge plant. And it was gorgeous, big, gorgeous variegated leaves. And it was a total unicorn, total, just like, gorgeous sport variegated alocasia and I took a closer look at it and there were like mutant sized mealybugs all over the damn thing and I was like mm -mm, no I'm sorry I can't do it I can't do it those things were massive I've never seen such huge mealybugs on a plant before in my life which is why I didn't even believe her that they were mealybugs and then she was really rude to me about it even though like I said it in a joking manner I was like oh it looks like really bugs you know and then she got mad but that's fine <laughs> we live and we learn not to go back to that nursery because there were oh my gosh their reviews on like Google and stuff too were like everybody here is really rude and I'm like oh gosh it's not just me so that is number one on my list number two I think Oh, younger me would have really liked to have known <laughs> or been reassured at least that not every plant is meant for you. And what I mean by that is that our environments are different. Our care styles are different. Like for me, I don't want to be watering my plants more than twice a week. So I try and stay away from plants that need to be frequently watered. I like plants that are very drought tolerant and thrive on neglect because I am a little bit more of a neglectful plant parent. So I think that it's important to understand as early as possible in your plant parenthood what kind of plant parent you want to be. And then, and then be honest with yourself about what kind of pet parent you actually are. So like at first, I'm not going to lie, I was like, yay, water my plants. I want to do it every day because I had like five plants and that's fine. That's easy to keep up with. But then when you get to like 50 plants, you don't want to be doing it every day. When you get to 100 plants, you don't even want to be doing it every week. Now I'm at like 200, maybe a little bit more than that. And I hate having to water them because it is such a task. Like I've had to learn how to break it up into smaller tasks, but that's not the point. The point is understand you as a plant parent and what plants are actually going to work for you. So for me, I'm not going to have like a bunch of ferns and I have a handful of calatheas, but I can't have too many of them. Like I'm not going to have super thirsty plants everywhere. I can have a few and just give those special attention, that is fine, but I can't have like a whole house full of calatheas. Oh my God, imagine. It would be beautiful, colorful, but a nightmare, like an absolute nightmare to keep well watered. So definitely don't get discouraged if you, like me, buy a bunch of pretty plants at the store. And then two weeks later, you can figure out why they're declining. They might just not be a good fit for you. And that is okay. There's no shame in saying like, hey, I just don't do well with those. So I'm not gonna buy them anymore. Which actually brings me nicely into number three, which is researching where your plants naturally grow. So understanding where they come from and what kind of environment they normally live in is going to help you understand their care needs. So if you have a plant that grows in a tropical rainforest, it's probably going to want humidity and it's probably going to enjoy being on the more moist side. If a plant is a crawler and it grows on the ground, it's probably not going to want bright light if it's something that grows underneath other plants. So it's a good idea to just understand where the plant comes from. At least for me, this helps me conceptualize better, like what my plant actually needs is a lot easier for my brain to remember than just like a list of care instructions. So actually understanding the plant itself and where it grows and its natural environment is going to be 
so, so beneficial for you as a plant parent moving forward. And just like researching the plant in general, like find one of my videos or one of my many, many planty content creators on YouTube or wherever you watch videos, TikTok, whatever. And look, just look, I don't know, do people make videos like I've literally never been on TikTok before in my life, but <laughs> um, there's lots of care videos on the internet. So there's tons of information. And if there isn't for any reason, don't be afraid to ask. There's tons of Facebook groups, Reddit threads, if you're into torturing yourself on Reddit and all of those good things. Like there's so much information out there. It is in your best interest to know as much as possible about a plant before bringing it into your home. Or you can do what I did and just buy everything that looks pretty in the store, look it up later, and then kill half of them. It's a learning experience. I don't think it's a bad thing. There's no such thing in my opinion as like a green thumb. Nobody's naturally just like good at it. You have to learn and you have to just kind of develop what I call your planty intuition and just trust it. Go with your gut. Just know, just know what works and what doesn't for you. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, let's go to number four, which is number four. Um, fertilizing is like actually important. For like the first year of my plant parenthood, I didn't fertilize my plants. I didn't know how to fertilize my plants. I was admittedly kind of intimidated by the idea of fertilizing and like messing it up. And I think that's a really common fear, unfortunately. So I'm here to tell you that there's nothing to be afraid of. All you got to do is just get yourself some regular degular houseplant fertilizer. I like a liquid fertilizer and you just put a little sploosh in your watering can and you water your plants. It's not going to hurt your plants. You're not going to burn your leaves unless you're using like a heavy synthetic fertilizer. So I definitely recommend just like a regular degular all natural fertilizer. It's not going to hurt your plants. You're not using anything strong enough to be hurting your plants. Um, I used the Espoma liquid house plant fertilizer for a really long time before I started experimenting with other things. I've been using instant plant food as well and I've been enjoying that because you don't have to use it as much and a little bit goes a long way with those. So, and it's not liquid. They have little tablets and you let them fizzle up in the water and then you water your plants with them. So it's super satisfying actually. And it is way better for the environment because you're not buying a big thing of liquid. So I can leave them linked down below if you guys want to check them out. I do have a discount for you guys as well for 25 for 20% 20 off giving y'all a bigger discount than what they actually gave me 20% off instant plant food with the code. I think Jacqueline's jungle, but I'll leave it on the screen and I'll leave it linked down below for you. If you are a beginner and you are afraid to fertilize your plants, these are a really great option for you. They're really foolproof, I promise. So don't be afraid to fertilize your plants. I sure was and now it's probably one of my favorite things to do because it makes me happy. It makes me feel like I'm doing something good for my plants and that they're getting the food and the nutrients that they need to continue to grow and thrive and give me beautiful variegation on the plants that I have that are variegated because if they don't have enough nutrients, sometimes plants will lose their variegation. Every plant is different, but making sure that it has everything that it needs is going to help your plant photosynthesize and thrive and live its best life. So fertilize those plants, girl. Don't be afraid. And number five is probably the most important one on the list, which is why I left it for last. And that is take it slow just chill don't go crazy <laughs> I know it's hard because you're really excited and you want to buy everything and you want to try every different genus and and see how it works for you but slow down I promise you you're gonna end up getting to a point where you have 
so many that it's overwhelming and I can't even tell you how many times in the beginning of my plant journey I brought a plant home thinking it was cute from the store but just didn't end up loving it and that is totally fine I think that's how we figure out what our plant preferences are like I bought a croton really early on in my plant journey because I thought it looked pretty in the store. I thought the foliage was really cool and the colors were really cool and then I brought it home and I was like, ew, you're really ugly <laughs> and you don't go with any of my decor at all. But um, I kept it for a long time anyway because I wasn't just gonna like throw it away and all that jazz. It was still a healthy plant. Um, but eventually, as I got more plants, it got neglected because I didn't love it and it and it died. So definitely chill. Put a pause on buying too many plants at one time. Focus on just a few at a time that you really love. Learn everything about them. Research them. Figure out where they grow. Get to know your plants. Build up your planty intuition. Learn how to trust that you know what you're doing and that you can tell if a plant is happy or not happy. I think we just get caught up in what everybody else says and what people say is right and wrong to do with your plants and I really don't think it's that like black and white. There's so much nuance to plant care and it's going to be different for everybody. So take that with a grain of salt that's why i think it's better to learn where your plant grows naturally um and just kind of try and mimic that environment for them to the best of your ability a lot of plants they're much more resilient than you think they are a lot of the time too so you don't need to go crazy they will adapt to the environment that you put them in as long as they have like most of what they need so i hope that I hope that that was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you have anything that you want to add. I would really appreciate that. I think that this can be a really helpful video that I wish I would have watched <laughs> four years ago before I started collecting so many plants because you can get to a point really quickly where you feel really overwhelmed and you can fall out of love with your plants and with collecting plants in general and I don't want that to happen. I want you to cultivate a collection of plants that you really genuinely love and that work for you and your environment and your plant care style. And um, I just want you to be happy with your plants and uh, not feel stressed out. So anyway, I hope that you found this video helpful and that you enjoyed it. And you should definitely give it a thumbs up. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. There's also a notification button so that you don't miss any videos from me. You'll get a notification on your phone or wherever you watch your YouTube videos. There's also a join button if you want to be part of the official plant fam, become an official member, get some perky perks. Um, trying to figure out some new stuff that I can bring to my members this year and uh, there's also a super thanks button if you guys want to super thanks me everything is appreciated I literally cannot do this without you and um, I love you and I hope you have a beautiful day or night whenever you are watching this and I also hope that I see you in the next one. Bye!